my son had gone out with his stepbrother and some friends on the way home they stopped at a gas station to buy a can of coca-cola he was thirsty he asked them to stop he went in to get the can of uh, soda got back in the car i know that much was on videotape he pulled up at a red light and a car pulled up next to him and just started shooting and they shot my stepson in the clavicle fractured his clavicle he was driving the car they shot my son one bullet in the neck my son and my stepson my stepson started driving fast trying to get away he drove about three or four blocks trying to hold my son But because his clavicle was fractured, he ended up crashing into a pole. And uh, he was trying to take my son to the nearest emergency room. And that's where somebody called 911 and I got that phone call in the middle of the night that uh, he was shot. He ended up in a trauma hospital for five weeks. In the beginning, when he first got there, it was obviously it was a shock to all of us. And that night in the emergency room, the ambulances kept coming because there was multiple gunshot victims. and. A lot of that night, I kind of forget because of the shock. The doctor did come into the room, put us in a room, and he told me that there was nothing they could do for my son because of where the bullet was. And that if he lived, he would have been a quadriplegic. And they had him in the surgical intensive care unit for about five weeks. At first, my son was, obviously he couldn't speak. He was intubated. Um, he had a lot of trouble because they, he was always biting the tubes from his throat, his mouth. He was trying to pull them. He would have tears coming down his face. We would try to talk to him. He really enjoyed music. So we would come in and play his favorite music. And, um, but the tears were less as time went on. So I knew he wasn't going to survive. And actually, I probably would have taken him as a quadriplegic and take, would have quit working and did whatever to take care of my son. But if he, his brain wasn't functioning, obviously it was me being too selfish. So the last few days, I knew that I had to take him off the life support. And then he died about two or three hours later. And we donated his organs because I know that's a discussion that we always had. Obviously, the beginning was trauma, shock. I couldn't believe that this would happen. I felt I raised a really good son. He was never involved in gangs or violent, never arrested. So it was kind of hard to believe that that would happen to him. I tried to keep him busy, athletic and sports, and so it was a real shock that this happened. But that I had really good detectives uh, working the case, even though in the beginning I didn't understand everything that they were doing, but I did understand for every one case, my son's folder sitting with his name on there. There was another one on top of it and another one on top of that. And his desk must have been, because it was Harrison, 
district, it was just filled with names of other people getting shot in the neighborhood from the west side to the south side. Um, I think a lot of times they think we're just going to sit back and wait until we get that phone call. Um, and whether they know it or not, most of the moms do not sit back and wait. And we go and do our own investigation. And that's when we try to start connecting with other family members, other moms. We try to connect with young people that they knew, um, created Facebook pages to try to connect with people and uh, get information. I would always send it right back to the detective and he would always tell me just don't worry, I got this, just take care of your other son. But obviously that's really hard to do to sit home and just wait for the phone call. We ended up getting together um, some flyers. Our family put some money together and we got $10,000 to do our, our reward. And every weekend, me, my mom, my husband, my aunt, we would walk the rough streets of the west side to hang up flyers, to talk to people, to try to find out what we can do to um, solve this case because um, I didn't want this case to go unsolved. My son has um, was married. I found out when he was in the hospital that his wife was five weeks pregnant. He now has a little girl, four years old. And he also has twin boys that are now nine. And I wanted them to know that I did everything possible to try to find justice for my son. So we did that for about a year, every weekend talked to the media, did whatever we need to do until we finally had someone that would listen. And thankfully, the detectives really worked the case and they found the person who killed my son.